Well, Monica, I know a little bit about acting because uh, I was uh, a drama major for two years and uh, I learned enough uh, to know that uh, first off, I'm the worst actor in all of Christendom, uh, which is why I quit trying to be an actor. But I also learned how to spot when an actor must really enjoy having a certain line. And I'm thinking recently, when I speak and you don't do what I say, you get hurt. That's the pattern. Here. Mm. And yeah. it don't stop until you do what I say or you run out of face. Now, I can't help yeah. but thinking that, you know, the night before you must have been dreaming about, you know, how you were going to chew into that line. <laughs> Was that a personal favorite of yours so far in the series? Not the night before, but back in August when I got the scripts, like early August, when I was reading through it and there's like a handful of lines that jumped out at me. And you read that line and you close the script and you're like, oh, this is going to be so you're, you're envisioning how it's going to go. Like, you know, it's just that's one of those I call them in this script or in any other script. When I see Taylor Sheridan's work, that's a Taylor Sheridan line. And he has a bunch of those throughout Yellowstone and Mayor Kingston in 1883. But yeah, Taylor's he's a bad dude. <laughs> well, it seems like uh, Taylor's, uh, you know, got a, a book somewhere of uh, talented people he's worked with along the way and is one way or the other is going to cast them in his projects. And, you know, I'm thinking of as far back as Sons of Anarchy, you worked uh, yeah. alongside him. Uh, even at, at that time, did he ever give any indication to you that what he what he really wanted to do was direct and write? No, the thing, I, I never met Taylor on Sons. It's, it's just a weird coincidence that he was, uh, he was there right when he left is when me and Rockman Dunbar came in. So I, we, we never, the first time we met or the first time I ever spoke to him was on my birthday of 2021 when he was telling me what he needed to see from me during the audition process for Thomas. That was the first time I ever spoke to him. And the first time I ever met him was day one at Cowboy Camp, like August 3rd, August 2nd. Well, um, I don't think I saw anything on your resume that indicated you'd spent much time on a horse before this project. So yeah. I have to ask, uh, how, how, uh, how hard was Cowboy Camp for you? Cowboy Camp was... First of all, all of it was extremely fun. It was, you know, it was life changing. It does something to you being on a horse that much. But after about three, four days, it turned from being fun. Hey, cowboy camp, let's all go to cowboy camp to it was work. It was 100 <laughs> degrees, you know, we're in Weatherford. We're up at the crack of dawn. Um, we're tending, you know, tending to our horses. It's, it, it was. Monica, Lamonica, I'm, I'm I'm losing you. I've, I've lost your voice. Oh, there, oh, there you it go. is. Okay. So you're in Weatherford. Can you hear me? Yes. So you're in Weatherford at the cowboy camp. What? Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. You got it. Can you hear me? I'm having some. There you go. There you go. There, yeah. yeah. That works. Okay. So you're in Weatherford at Cowboy Camp. And at first it's fun, but... Yeah, it, it, it turned into work. Like, it turned into... That's when I got a real appreciation for what cowboys... Just the, the profession, the culture. It's, it's, some, it's some tough work. And, uh, you know, you, you watch all these shows growing up. You see cowboys, like, you know, they're riding on the horses. It looks cool. It's... You know, you're, uh, I don't know, just a bunch of hero moments. But the real work of cowboying is no joke. And I got a whole new respect for it now. Well, that's something that's very fascinating to me about uh, 1883 as a whole, the idea that uh, you think, okay, all these people got in wagon trains and they went across, you know, the wilderness. And, you know, uh, that was hard. I mean, and, and you guys don't flinch from showing just how hard it is. And, you know, some people don't even think about the idea. Well, yeah, they, they must have had to cross rivers uh, at some point, And that's yeah. dangerous. Uh, 
Yeah, everything out there, like everything in nature, especially in the 1800s, it seems like it's trying to kill you. And you're just trying to get from point A to point B and every from weather to uh, creatures, snakes, animals, wolves, you know, bandits, everything is trying to kill you. And it's, and you're, a lot of people were grossly underprepared for everything that was coming at them. So I, I wouldn't have made it back then. I, I know now, like I'm not, there was a different breed of human being back then. I don't know if I, there's a couple of guys on the show that I, I think would have made it. I'm not one of them. <laughs> now, uh, I've, I've got a few years on you. So uh, I, I can remember uh, Monday nights when I was a kid, I watched a show called The Outcasts yeah. and uh, with Otis Young, who's no longer with us, and Don Murray. Mm -hmm. And that relationship between those two guys reminds me a little bit of the relationship between you and uh, Sam Elliott, except because those two guys never liked each other at all. Yeah, I, I mean, they, yeah. you know, I can remember some choice lines from that show that I won't repeat here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, did you and Sam, you know, even though you had, I'm sure, Taylor's script, uh, did you go off in a corner somewhere or into a bar somewhere and say, okay, we got to work out a relationship. We've got to work out a backstory. I mean, it may not be anything we even tell, tell Taylor, but we need a past. We really, we didn't. We, as soon as we met each other, we met each other in the um, saloon that's on Taylor's Ranch. And that's where, you know, our little bubble where we could all come together and hang out and blow off some steam. And the first time I met him, he gave me a hug, he embraced me, and he was like, this is going to be amazing for both of us. And, you know, just knowing who these, you know, Thomas and Shay are. And from day one, we just, we just hit it off. Like, we didn't really have that that meeting of how we know each other or what. We both had individual meetings with Taylor as far as our you know, individual characters and where they came from and how they kind of met up. But me and Sam just hit it off instantly. And it was the, one of the first scenes we did of the series, of those the first day of shooting for everyone. It was the scene where we're explaining to the immigrants that this is a snake, this is poison ivy, this is, you know, and Taylor's sitting behind the camera in Video Village and he comes out and we're rehearsing and the toilet scene, but the, the back and forth between me and Sam on that, it kind of kept going. It didn't stop. And he, you know, Taylor was laughing. Everyone around us was laughing and Taylor was like, you guys got it. All right. I'm a, and he, from that point on, he's just let us do what we do. And we've just <laughs> grown closer and closer together, me and Sam. And now like in front of the screen and behind it, we're brothers. Like we'll go get drinks together. We talk about everything in life together. And we will meet up in the morning, every morning for work, we embrace each other. And it's just, you know, over the Christmas break, you know, we're going back and forth with each other. It's just, it's a special relationship that carried off the screen. You know, uh, one of the many things I like about the relationship is we are learning little by little, you know, it's like peeling an onion. I mean, in the very first episode, it's like, you know, uh, you know, part of, part of what Thomas has signed on for, it seems, is to uh, talk, you know, the captain out of killing himself every morning. I mean, it's like, yeah. well, if you're going to do it, do it now. I don't have to be digging a hole, you know, when it gets too hot, you know. Yeah. But uh, a recent episode, uh, it seems to be emphasize the idea that as, as much as these guys like each other and they ride together and they're companions there are some things neither one will know fully about the other the, the whole conversation about you know he says well the most terrifying thing is the unknown he says well you've never been whipped you know Cap. yeah yeah and, and the idea that uh oh uh you know uh, it, it, it's it's just that there's a line that no matter what they try, I mean, it They're won't ever be really crossed. They come from different worlds. They do come from different worlds. And no matter how much they embrace and they bond and they know each other, they have they, they kind of view the world similar, but they still come from different worlds, especially in the 1800s. And there's something about that that just, and in general, those times back in the day, and even to large point to present day, when a bunch of guys get together, like me and my buddies, we'll go watch the game. 
we'll drink some beers and we just, the way we communicate is different than, you know, maybe the way some other people communicate. Um, like me and my father's relationship, we would, there wasn't a lot said. It was like, we were comfortable with silence, you know? And then there, there's, and a lot of times if that shows the relationship. There's more said in silence than a bunch of dialogue, just people talking back and forth at each other, not listening and just talking heads. You, Thomas and Shay could sit around a campfire and say three words, but that says everything. They had a whole full conversation. Like men back then, it was, um, you know, there wasn't crying out my emotions and woe is me kind of thing. It was like, this is what it is. And, you know, we enjoy each other's company and we have each other's backs. That's the relationship. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the whole idea of, you know, now you know why I don't like to sleep. And, you know, it's like, well, I, I, I sleep to get away from my nightmares. And it's yeah. like, that, that says so much in so yeah. few words. Yeah, um, he, the, yeah, the, 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 he doesn't, he even says, I don't like talking. He doesn't speak a lot, but when he does speak, you listen and it's poignant and it's for a reason and he moves on and he, he doesn't live in it either. You know, he says, you know, we, you know, like he said, we, uh, I go to sleep to escape the nightmares. I made some coffee and he gets up and it's, let's start the day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, that's, that's what it is. And that's how you go about life. You don't, you don't live in it. You don't soak in it. We got a job to do today. Let's do it. And, and not to, to spend too much time on this, but as far as I know, there's only been one point in the show so far where you've referred to him as Shay. And that yeah. is, you know, to stop him from doing something that you didn't want him to do. And uh, it's always Captain, Captain. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that a carryover from your time together, you know, in, in the military? It's just a, a respect thing. Like, you know, you know, like I have coaches in football. I haven't played football in over 25, you know, 25 years or something. Mm -hmm. But when I see my old coach, I could call him by his first name. We're all men now. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's like, hey, coach, how you been, man? It's like you're still coach. And with with Shay and Thomas, it's still you were my captain in the war. And it's, yeah, I called you, Shay, like when there's intimate moments and I need to speak to you, like I need to get through to you, it's, it's Shay. But in general, you know, morning, Captain. Yeah. 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 Now, it looks like Thomas uh, <clears throat> may be getting involved with a gypsy lady. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I know you can't, I, I know Taylor swears everybody the secrecy, you can't talk too much about what's going to happen down the road but uh how have you two you two actors uh struck a balance or, or created a past for yourself uh the same thing as well like she's uh she she is a romani woman and just telling me about her past and you know their culture and learning about each other and i'm telling her about black soldiers and you know buffalo soldiers and black cowboys and the history like just us under us understanding each other's cultures makes it easier for wherever that's going to go and our scenes that we do. And it's the same thing with, uh, with Graziella that when we all met in cowboy camp mm -hmm. and just with everyone in general, we all hit it off and we all had a, a culture where it was a supportive culture and we're here to pick each other up and just learn about each other. So on screen, it can be, you know, it can be seamless when we're, you know, we're supposed to have this connection. And it's, you know, it, it seems like it's working so far. It's just the idea of Thomas having a love interest, whether it, it happens or whether it doesn't, for a black cowboy in the 1800s on television, like to me, that, that means everything. I've never seen that. Like, you, you know, with Otis Young, with Danny Glover, uh, Dietz, you know, like we just haven't seen that kind of angle with a black cowboy. So just a hint to that is exciting to me and I'm, you know, I can't wait for everyone to see where that goes, you know, if it even goes anywhere. Well, you bring up something. Uh, I remember going on the, the junket for uh, Unforgiven years ago and wow. a small group of us in the room with uh, Clint Eastwood. And, you know, I'm, I, I don't claim to be Clint's bowling buddy or anything like that, but I mean, I'm, I've talked with him enough to know that I can, I can understand where he's like, you know, thinking whoever he's talking to is a real dunce. And uh, some woman in the group, I won't mention her name because she's no longer with us, but she said, well, uh, 
why why did you have a, a black actor playing the, the the cowboy friend of his? I mean, the, the, were there black cowboys then? Mm. And mm. Eastwood, you know, you talk about Sam Elliott saying a lot with a little sort of like, mm. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, uh, no, ma'am. There were, there were a lot of black cowboys. You know, yeah. They immediately went on to somebody else. <laughs> Have you found that though response from some less than enlightened people that they're surprised at what they were black yeah. cowboys? <laughs> yeah, I I I try to interact with the fans on social media as much as possible. Uh, just to, you know, it's fun. And I know uh, me before I was an actor, like growing up and just, I would have loved to have the opportunity to, you know, have a response from an actor that I loved respond to me. And that, you know, so I, I go on, I, you know, I look at a bunch of stuff and there was one comment. I didn't respond to it. I just skipped to the next one. They said, I love 1883, but realistically, a black cowboy riding with a bunch of white people wouldn't have happened back then. And the back talk really wouldn't have happened. Like, that's just, you know, they need to do more research about, you know, I'm like, I want to say something, but yeah, I can't yeah. go down that rabbit hole. But the more research you do, like, I knew there were black cowboys, but yeah. when I got the role, I didn't know there were as many and as, you know, and they're their impact in shaping the West as it was like, there was one in every four Cowboys was a black cowboy back in the eighties. We were everywhere. So it was, I knew they existed. I knew about Bass Reeves. I knew about Nat Love. I knew about, you know, Bill Pickett. I, you know, the, the big ones that I learned about, but there were so many other ones that just, that were impactful that you just never heard their stories. And that's why on this job, this is a great gig acting wise, you know, career wise, but responsibility wise, I took it upon myself to really embrace the culture of it and do it the right way. And hopefully it's, you know, it's, it's resonating. Now, when you go out in public now, uh, do you find more people recognizing you for 1883 or, or they still want to talk about the comic book character? It's funny the the comic book genre, like that whole, it's pretty massive. So, and I had a pretty significant role in the television DC world. So it kind of reshaped the universe and Arrow was one of the first ones to, you know, uh, start the shows on the DC world. And my character was, was responsible for killing Arrow, one of the characters I played. So no matter what I do for a lot of people, I'm still going to be the monitor or the anti-monitor. Like, what's the monitor doing in the 1800s? That must be a, a different multiverse, a different reality, you know. But I think as this goes on and as time goes on, the significance of Thomas and what it means and the, the show, is it's been a, a huge success. I think this will overshadow pretty much anything I've done to this point uh, when it's all said and done, you know, in a, in a year or two when people are looking back on it. Now, I've often talked with actors about... Uh what they've learned from working with other people. I mean, not whether they liked them or they didn't like them or whatever, but what they think they learned. Uh, what do you think you've learned from working with Sam Elliott? Sam, uh, I try to pick up something from each actor, especially these actors that have been around, like, you know, Kiefer Sutherland, I work with Nick Cage, um, Sigourney Weaver. Working with Sam, helped me to really appreciate I appreciated it before but not as much as I did after working with Sam just the art of filmmaking the craft in itself you know we would all most actors when you're done with your scene you'll go back to your trailer or you'll go somewhere where you're not you know Sam will stick around Sam has his apple box not his chair that says Sam Elliott he has a little apple box that he takes around with him and when he's done with his scene, he'll pull his Apple box around to behind the cameras and just watch other people work, just loving the craft. He has nothing to do with these scenes, but he just wants to sit in and watch other people work. And there's been times where he's wrapped at like 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm there, I'm still working all day. And I have a night scene at like 11 p.m., you know, going into the wee hours of the night. Sam will go home or back to the ranch and come back. 30 minutes and grab his apple box 
and just sit and watch our scenes, um, you know, around the campfire or action or whatever we're doing. Sam just loves the art of filmmaking and the craft of acting. And he just seeing him and he's been doing this over 50 years and just that I already had a passion for, it, but that grew even more. And that changed the way, you know, my behavior on set. Like, I don't go back to the trailer now. I'm Like, I'm finding it more fascinating watching other people do their craft. And that helps, you know, in turn, I can't wait to work again, watching other people do their work. And I picked that up from Sam. And the flip side of that is you're working with two uh, co-stars uh, who are best known for country music, their performances, their, their careers. Now, th this isn't their first rodeo. They have acted before, but... Uh, you know, this is still a relatively new thing for them. Yeah. What do you think you've learned about, learned from working with them? Another thing too, I pride myself on my discipline and work ethic in whatever I'm doing. My dad always says, uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. So you can't, you know, cut corners over here and think you're just going to show up over here. You're, you're not. Like you need to do it all the time. And working with Tim and Faith, their work ethic and what they do going into everything they do, work ethic transfers. So they might not have been in front of the camera as much as Sam, but they knew this role for each one of them coming up and the significance of it, the work they put into it. Like I'm, I marvel at watching their scenes on the day and watching it on screen right now play out like it translates. They're brilliant. They're doing a fantastic job. Like if someone came in and didn't know any of these people or didn't know what their background was and they just watched it, you, would, you couldn't tell me those are two country music singers that never really, you know, Tim more than Faith, but that haven't really been around acting that much because mm -hmm. they're bringing it. And that's the work ethic they have. And that just, you know, it's inspiring to me that someone embraces my work ethic to take it to the next level. And that's what I pick up from them. They're, they're brilliant. Well, you know, there's something to be said for the idea that uh, people who are musicians, who are singers, particularly country singers, uh, they're playing a role every time they sing a song. You it's know? storytelling, yeah. 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 And I mean, it, it, it's not the same thing as acting, but in some ways, there, there's yeah. a little, there, there are some things they have in common. Yeah, I can see that 100%. Now, so far, uh, and we're getting near the hard break, so I got to make these questions quick. Uh, uh, what has been the most difficult scene, the most difficult day of shooting for you? Uh, you know, when the night before, when you looked at the call sheet, went, "Oh, we're going to do that tomorrow." Uh, I guess I can't call yeah. in sick, huh? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had a handful of them, and some uh, more difficult for different reasons the other than others. Uh, one that just showed the last episode, like the Brazos River crossing. Yes. I spent four days in that river and that this, we did this in a time in Texas where it wasn't as hot as it was in August. It was cold. And I spent the whole time. It was like, we get there first thing in the morning. Uh, what, what are we going to shoot first? We're trying to line up the shots. We're trying to figure it out. We don't know yet, but what we do know is Thomas is in the water. So just walk out in the water and we'll figure out how we are going to, you know, I just, I spent four days in the water and it was like, after in the water a while, it's not as bad, but when you're, you get out and you're just wet and they're turning the cameras around and they're reshaping, redoing this and that, and you're just wet waiting. And right when you dry off and you're not shivering anymore, it's time to get right back in doing that for four days, 12, 12 hours a day, that, that was taxing. And I was cramping up from swimming and I'm carrying people. And it's just like, mm. fully, you know, fully clothed, boots on, pants on and, and water inside the boots. When you're trying to swim, the boots trying to come off and your toes are trying mm. to grip the boot to keep it. Like it was, it was a lot. Calves cramping up. Mm. That was a lot. And there were some, uh, some scenes like horse riding scenes with bandits riding around and shooting and I'm you know I'm comfortable on a horse now but in the beginning that was a, it was it was tricky for you know finding my seat and doing juggling a lot of balls at once finding your seat you're sprinting around fast as you can go you have a gun you're shooting whether you take a shot whether you you know 
all of this was a challenge. And just being out in Montana in the freezing weather, just not doing anything is a challenge in itself. Like we, this was a tough job. Uh, well, uh, I think the, uh, the hard work is, being, is paying off wonderfully on screen. Uh, congratulations. Um, Thank you. On the show so far. And I look forward to seeing you and the rest of the cast in many future episodes. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interview. You take care now.